everyone, Kurt Zepp here. Today I want to just talk about using my camera lens for astrophotography. Wait a minute, Kurt. You mean you're telling me you can actually do that? Use a camera lens for astrophotography? You sure can. And I, I love this setup. This is my Canon EF 200mm f2.8 2 USM camera lens. And this makes a great astro astrograph. The Canon 135mm also makes a great uh, astrograph as well. You can actually get that in, in a Sam Young's version for a cheaper price, so you don't have to pay Canon's uh, outrageous price. As I said, I love this setup. I've had really good luck with it, and I did something similar last year, but this year I have it even better. So let me go through what I, what I have on it. First off, it goes down to f2.8, but I have it stepped up to, or stepped down, I should say, to f4.0 because that gives the best uh, stars, and as far as I can tell. And how do I have it connected up? Last year, I, I mentioned, I used it last year, but I had my Canon T3i 600D connected up to it. This year, I have my ASI 294 MC Pro connected up to it and I'm using the ZWO EOS adapter and it has a filter drawer attached to it, a 2 inch filter drawer. So right now I'm doing nar dual narrowband imaging with my IDAS NBZ filter. So using this adapter it's manual so I still have to do the focusing and stuff like that. There is a company called Astro Mechanics that uh, makes an electronic version of this where you can actually connect it up to the computer and use like Nina to do auto focusing because you're using the camera's internal uh, controllers. So that seems pretty cool as well. But I've had really good luck with this adapter and um, I don't mind focusing manually. I've had really good luck with this camera. I've been using it on my Celestron lately, but I've, I'm working on another project that I have my ASI 1600 on that. So that allowed me to use it on this lens, which I'm, I'm loving. I'm having a great, great time using it here. And also, the way I got this thing, the way I have this thing connected, I purchased the ZWO ring, and that holds the camera. And I also have it, I'm using an ADM ring for the lens. And I also purchased the ADM dovetail bar. So ZWO's ring and the ADM ring are both connected to this dovetail, which I can just take this thing off and it, it's really, really super handy. Also, since I'm on the ADM kick right now, I replaced my saddle, the original saddle for my Cirrus mount with an ADM dual saddle. So this can take the V series dovetail as well as the D series dovetail, which is larger. The reason I went with that is because my Celestron has the D series, which is larger than the V series. So now I, now I can put both things on here. I can, I can put that the Celestron edge on here, as well as I can put my smaller stuff that I have on here like this, for example. For guiding, I'm using the ZWO 30 millimeter mini guide scope, as well as an ASI 120mm, so I, I have a couple of these now. These are even these have been great auto guiders. Also, I have this thing connected up to my computer and I'm using Nina to run everything. And Nina's been doing a great job inside my astronomy shed. When I'm outside in my front yard, I've been using the ASI R Pro. So if you've been following me, you'll, you'll know I've been using that and I've been really liking that as well. How I got it connected up to the computer, well, I just, I'm, Got my cable, the EQ Mod cable, and it's been working working really well even for this setup. As I said, I, I love this setup. It's so compact, and I can actually take this and I can put it on to my Ioptron uh, portable Skyguider Pro, and so I can't wait to do that as well. But right now I've got it in here, so this is this is real easy, a you know, really sweet setup. I, I just love this setup. I, I, I can't get enough of it. Also, you may be wondering. I mentioned that I have this thing set at f4. How did I get the lens to go to f4 if you can't control it? Well, it's really quite easy. What you do is you, you get your camera out, your Canon camera, 
and you set it in here at F whatever you want and then when you take the light keep the lens on but you press this button right here and this one right here and also then you then you remove the lens holding that button it locks it into the the desired aperture setting that you have well you might be wondering what I did with my AT115 telescope setup that was on here well that's just on vacation right now I've got it It's getting a rest now, a well-deserved rest. I've been using it faithfully for over two years now, every clear night, so it deserves a break. If I get around to it, I'll come back at nighttime and show you what I'm imaging right now. It's coming out pretty well. I'm, I'm, well I'll tell you, I'm imaging the filamentary nebula, which is the vial nebula or vial nebula, I don't know how to say it. With this camera lens, I can get the whole thing all in one image and it looks really cool. Okay. Well, that's all, and I'll see you later. Well, hello, folks. I'm back, and I just want to show you what uh, is going on while I'm actually imaging. I'm using Nina, of course, and here's my sequence. I'm actually going to add some more exposures to this. I'm still not in the trees yet, so I can go probably another hour or so. So when this gets done, I'm just going to do another, maybe another 20 images. I'm doing three-minute exposures on this thing. And again, I'm using that IDAS NVZ filter, which is a good choice with this nebula. And this nebula, once again, it's the Val nebula, or Val's nebula, or the Cygnus Lou. It's also called the filamentary nebula. And it consists of the first Val, or NGC 6960, and that's also known as the Witch's Groom. Over here we have the second Val, and that's known as Fleming's Triangle. It used to be known as Pickering's Triangle, and its common or its technical name is Siemens or Siemens 3-188. Right. Then we have the third Val Nebula, and that's down here. It's a very much fainter area, and it's called the Southern Blowout Region. Okay, for obvious reasons. So it's sort of blown out from the rest of it. And the fourth Veil Nebula, that's all this area in here. And this is very faint as well. And it's also called just assorted filaments. It consists of NGC 6974, NGC 6979, and some other wispy areas in here. And finally, the fifth veil up here, this is another commonly imaged part. This is NGC 6992, NGC 6995. It's also called IC 1340. And it's also known as the Southeastern Knot. So all this is uh, in this area. And together, they all make this, this beautiful region. So I'm thinking it looks pretty good, and I I hope it all comes out. I have 11 hours on this area so far, but some of it may I may delete it. I'm not sure. I got to go through it and more or take a closer look at it because I was imaging when the moon was out, and there may have been some gradients in here that might diminish the object. But so far, it's looking pretty good. Anyways, that's all I have for you folks, and we'll see you later, and thanks for tuning in.